Thanks everyone for coming to this month's Woodworkers Anonymous. Would anyone like to start? I'll go first. Hi, I'm Dale. Hi, Hi Dale. Dale. I'm a woodworker and I don't have an outfeed table, an assembly table, or a workbench. And I'm so ashamed. Hi, Dale coming to you from my garage again and I have never been as excited as I am about a build as I am this one. No more taking sheet goods and putting them over my table saw or my router table whenever I need a flat surface to work on. I'm finally building an assembly table and I'm like a kid at Christmas. I am so excited. Come on, let's go. Safety is always the first step. I start by breaking down strips of 3 quarter inch plywood that I'll use for the legs of the assembly table. I start by ripping 4 at 3 quarter inch and then 4 at 3 inch width. Each leg will be made with one 3 inch piece and one 3 and 3 quarter inch piece. Since I have my fence set at 3 inches, I'll go ahead and rip more strips of 3 quarter inch plywood at 3 inches. These will be for the bottom shelf supports. Now I can very easily use my crosscut sled to cut all the leg pieces to the same length. I'll be placing the top of the table on top of the legs, cutting the legs to 34 and 3 8 inches. When I have a project that has lots of similar sized pieces, I find it super helpful to tape the pieces together and mark what they are. Now I need to break down the tabletop supports. I'm going to do this in two steps. First I'm going to rip some 3 quarter and some 1 half inch plywood at 4 and a quarter inches. These will be the longer rails for the bench top and I'll be laminating those together to have a nice thick and strong main rails. I will both rip and cross cut these rails to their final size later. For now, I just rough cut the length to 48 inches. To laminate them together, I lay them out on my clamps and use plenty of glue. Don't skimp on glue. I make sure that I have a really good coverage and then clamp both laminations at the same time. Use plenty of clamps. You want this to have a really, really good connection. After the glue has dried, it's time to trim them up to their final width of four inches. This is pretty much how I do all my laminations. I leave one board just a bit long to ensure I have a straight side with no glue so I can run that straight down the fence, then turn the lamination over and clean up the other side. This way I never really have to worry about cleaning or scraping any glue. I've got just a few more rip cuts to make. I need to rip the cross supports to the top. I think just laminating the outside two runners will give plenty of strength to the bench. So for the cross pieces, I'll keep them at three quarters inches thick and four inches wide. I'm kind of playing it by ear right now on how many cross pieces I'll need to achieve the stability in the top that I want, so I'm probably cutting a couple more than I'll end up using. It's always a great idea to stop once in a while and review the plans on what you have already done, where you are now, and what is left to be done to make sure that you're keeping on track. So you guys know what I've always said, math is hard. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to measure and cut the rails for all of the shelf supports without having to pull out the tape measure at all. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this without measuring with these scrap pieces of plywood. The legs are going to go together like this. They will be flush up against the front as well as the back. I'm going to take the long rail and it's going to go across the front and the back and fit in all the way across the front. The shorter rails are going to come in like this and butt up against inside. So now I know that the short rails need to be the entire length of the bench minus a three quarter inch front rail and minus a three quarter inch leg. It's going to be on both sides. So now I should be able to simply stack four pieces up like this, put it flush, Take the short rail, butt it up against this. Now I can mark the other side and I know that that's going to be the exact length that needs to be. To make my life a little easier, I went ahead and clamped all four boards together and then I clamped them all flush with the tabletop. Now all I have to do is take the actual 
pieces that I have cut for the lower, shorter rails, butt it up against, and then mark the other side. Now I know that's exactly where I need to cut. I'll put an X here so I know the blades on that side. That should be a perfect fit. No measuring involved because math is hard. You'll probably notice that I have had lots of repeated cuts and not a lot of changes to my fence or stop blocks. I designed this table purposely for that so that not only would it make the build easier, it would make it much faster as well. Something you may want to keep in mind when you build your shop projects. Okay, I gave my table saw a good workout and now I have all of the main pieces to the table cut to size and now it's time to assemble. I start with the legs using pocket holes to join them. I shoot a few pocket holes along the skinnier leg board. I double check that I'm on the skinnier leg board as the skinnier leg board will butt up against the wider leg board. I'm saying leg board a lot. Leg board. I set my drill clutch fairly light. While I do sometimes use my impact driver, I do prefer driving pocket screws with my drill set with a light clutch. This really helps in not going too deep with the pocket screws. I did the first leg driving vertically, but then I discovered it's much easier and much faster setting up with horizontal driving. At least it was for me. Now I move on to assembling the bottom shelf supports. I'm using pocket holes for these as well. I double check that I grab only the bottom cross support pieces and drill a couple pocket holes in each end of each bottom shelf cross support. I start assembly of the bottom shelf supports by first attaching all of the outside pieces and making sure it is square. Once that is done, I assemble the first cross support in the center. Truth be told, this is probably all that is needed, but I go ahead and add two more cross supports. Notice that I'm using the tabletop as a flat reference so that I can be sure that all cross supports are attached flush. The tabletop supports are done basically the same as the supports for the lower shelf by putting pocket holes in both edges of the cross supports. Unlike the lower shelf supports, the upper shelf supports, I add more pocket holes along one side of each that will allow me to fasten the supports to the tabletop from underneath. Assembling the top support is also the same as the bottom support, including starting with the outside pieces to ensure it is square. A couple differences is that for the top, I added more cross supports as I wanted to make the tabletop as stable as I can. Note that I'm taking special care to make sure that all of the pocket holes along the supports are facing toward the underside of the tabletop. I don't think that I've mentioned this yet, but while I'm not following any plans that I saw or downloaded from the web, I certainly am using as inspiration the tables that Brad from Fix This Build That and Jay from Jay Bates Creations made. Okay, it's time to start making this thing look like an assembly table. I'm going to start by attaching the legs to the top support. I do this upside down as this is going to make it much easier to make sure that the legs are flush with the top of the supports. I'm kind of using the table to help make the table. Wait, did I just say I'm using the table to build the table? I lay down some wax paper to protect the tabletop from glue. I then spread glue on the corners of the top support where the legs will make contact. Clamp it nice and tight, pre-drill with a countersink bit, and drive home the screws. This should make for a very secure connection. The only thing you want to make sure is at this point is that the legs are going on square. If they don't go on square at this point, it's going to make it a lot harder for you later. Once I get all four legs glued and screwed to the support, I temporarily place the bottom support in place with clamps. This is going to help a good bit in making sure that the legs stay square and plumb while the glue dries. Leaving the table upside down so I can use gravity to my advantage, I clamp on scrap pieces of wood to hold the bottom shelf support at the height I want it. That's leaving about an inch from what will be the bottom of the table. From there I use a healthy amount of glue on the corners, set the bottom shelf support in place, clamp it tight, and drive home the screws. 
Because I need to glue all four corners at the same time, I do need to work fairly quickly as the glue starts to set up. I didn't have any glue on hand that had longer setup time, so I just worked quickly. Next is attaching the tabletop. Simply drive in all the pocket screws. Quick tip when cutting a piece that will be unsupported is just start to cut a few inches and stop. Then clamp the unsupported piece like I do here, then complete the cut. I'm using scrap 5 8 inch plywood for the bottom shelf. I just need to cut it to size and then screw it in. I'm not worried about having the screws visible for the bottom shelf, so I simply screw straight into the supports. Here again, I'm using the table to build the table. Pre-drill with a countersink and then drive screws home into the shelf supports below. At this point, the assembly table is done and it is very, very sturdy. I want to throw in a few extras, so I'm continuing this build to fit my needs a bit more. Extra need number one, mobility. I have to make just about everything in my shop mobile. I'm using casters that will raise the table when I need to move it and then lower it back to the ground to use it. This way, when in use, it's sitting on the ground and becomes super sturdy. I did have to add a small three quarter inch piece of plywood behind each of the legs to give more material to screw the casters into. Extra need number two, clamp storage. The level of my current clamp storage is just below it sucks. I want to have my smaller clamps, which I use all the time, nicely stored at hand's reach. For this, I cut a four foot by four foot piece of plywood to fit into one of the sides of the table. Screw that sheet into the inside of two of the legs on one side. In case I want to redo this later, I'm only using screws and no glue. For clamp racks, I cut some scrap plywood. Here you can see why I made the table the height I did. Great outfeed. After cutting some scraps to size, I drill several holes down the length of the boards just off center. From there I use a square and mark the sides of the holes. These will be the slots for the clamps to slide into. Using my table saw and cross cut sleds seem to be the simplest and quickest way to cut out the slots, especially since I don't have a bandsaw yet. The blade is very high here, but very safe and controlled. I use pocket holes to attach a back to each clamp rack, which seem to do the trick nicely. For the sides, I just use glue and brad nails. Before I knew it, I had several racks of different sizes and I just needed to screw them to the side of the table. Screwing them to the sides just took a few screws. I just needed to make sure that it was level. All easy peasy lemon squeezy. Yep, this is gonna work nicely. I'm digging this. Extra need number three, T-Track. I'm using Armor Tool T-Track, which bolts into the table instead of screwing. I think that gives far more clamping strength. That comes at a price for those of us that are using three quarter inch plywood for tabletops though. These T-tracks are the same thickness as the top, so I need to screw extra support pieces under the table where the T-track will be going. Kind of a pain, but I think it's worth it for the added strength. How do you set your router depth? Measuring is for chumps. Set your router on top of two T-tracks and plunge the bit until it hits the tabletop and lock in that depth. Mark where the T-track will go so that it will be right in the middle of the support you just added below the tabletop. For this T-track, we'll be routing a groove all the way through the tabletop. Clamp a straight edge and run the router against it. Don't do what I did by taking too deep a cut. Take multiple small cuts. I didn't do that and the router traveled a bit on me at the end of the cut. That's okay though, it'll still work perfectly fine. Attaching the T-track is easy. Drill some holes inside of each groove, add the included bolts to the T-track, and insert into the grooves. Tighten a nut on each bolt from below your tabletop, and now I have a very, very strong T-track system. I'm putting edge boarding around the entire tabletop for four main reasons. One, 
it's going to keep the edges from splintering off the plywood, hurting my baby soft hands and ultimately ending in tears. B, it's going to give more strength to the sides of the desk that are overhanging. Third, it'll give me a lot more area for clamping on the sides. And the fourth reason, it's just going to look nicer. Attaching edge pieces is not that difficult. I glue, clamp, and brad nail it on. Since I don't have clamps long enough to spread the entire width of my table, I use the T-tracks to clamp a 2x4 down to the table, and I use that to clamp the edge pieces on while I brad nail them. If you don't have a flush cut saw, I highly recommend you get one. Since I don't like measuring, I cut all the edge pieces long and then just cut them off flush for a perfect fit every time. Don't measure when you don't need to. While I take off the sharpness of the edges of the workbench by just putting a slight chamfer all the way around, I want to talk about these masks. Full transparency, Basecamp sent me these for free for me to try out and for me to give an honest review. They have two types. One of them is the regular two elastic strap. I didn't really wear that one too much because I wanted one of these single strap Velcros for fast and easy on and off. I like this single strap Velcro type, especially these over the ear loops that they have. This really helps put it on faster and easier and it helps keep it in the right position the entire time it's on your face. These wear very, very comfortably, even for long durations. After I've had it on for easily over a couple of hours, I didn't feel any, any, any tightness in the face. It wasn't a sweaty face. It was just really breathable and it worked really, really well and was really comfortable. The thing I liked best about these was that once I had them on and I gave a little pinch to the nose clip, my glasses hardly fogged up at all. In fact, rarely did they even fog up even a little. These are a huge improvement over the mask I used to wear. These are really simple to put on. You simply loop it over your ears and then in a single cross behind your head, you fasten the Velcro. For those that would like even a bit more support, they come with an extra strap to go over your head. I find I didn't really need it. The Velcro strap alone kept it in place for me. They come with an extra carbon filter, which are really easy to swap out. The package says these N99 masks are 99.9% .9 filter efficient. I'll leave a link to these down below in the description. For me, I'm going to be wearing these a whole lot more in the shop. Now back to work. Putting this small chamfer on the top and bottom edges, as well as the corners, is going to make this just that much more comfortable to the hand. So here it is. It is big and it is beautiful. I love, love, love this table. The T-tracks are awesome. The clamp rack is awesome the under storage is awesome and yes the mobility is awesome too i cannot tell you how excited i am for this i've designed it so that the height is just perfect to also use as an outfeed table to my table saw i've already used this table for a couple of projects and i am really liking it I designed it purposely with only one under storage shelf because I knew that I wanted another one midway up so that I could put whatever tool I'm working with for that project for quick access right underneath. But I didn't know if I wanted it to go half the length or the full length. Well, I've decided I need it to go the full length. So I'll be putting that in later. Having the clamps right here at arm's reach and stored orderly has been so, so nice. A large storage shelf has really helped as well. Thanks for watching, and I am super excited about finally having a very sturdy assembly table. Until next time, see ya.